Smart Mom Hacks, episode number 83. My name is Krista, and I'm your host. It's September 4th, 2024, and today we're talking about something that's important for everyone, especially us mamas. Today, we are talking about community, finding your tribe, or your momcom, as I like to call it. You know, that group of supportive, like-minded moms who just get you. We'll be exploring why having a strong community is so important for every mom, wherever you are on your hashtag mom life journey, how being social can make all the difference in your well-being, and we'll even share some tips on how you can find a mom group that fits your vibe or start one from scratch if you can't find the perfect fit. But before we get into that, I just want to say thanks for tuning in, Mama. I started this podcast because babies don't come with instructions. As of this recording, I am chasing around a six-year-old that no amount of Googling, mom groups, or books were able to prepare me for. There's a lot of stuff people don't talk about when it comes to pre-pregnancy, during pregnancy, postpartum. And as someone who was previously terrified of all of the above... I'm here to help you pull back the curtain on all of it. And every now and then, it may get a little messy. We may share a little TMI, but that's why you're here, right? My goal is you'll leave every episode feeling refreshed, inspired, and hopeful knowing you are not on this mom journey alone. Now, there's a lot of subject matter to cover when it comes to mom life, and we are covering it all. If you're not following this podcast yet, make sure you hit that follow or subscribe button wherever you listen to podcasts so you don't miss a single episode. Now, let's talk about mom communities. Let me start by sharing a little story with you. When I first became a mom, I felt like I was on this beautiful, sometimes overwhelming journey all by myself. There were sleepless nights, countless diaper changes, and that never-ending question of, am I even doing this right? (laughs) Now I'll admit I was terrible about socialization when my daughter was an infant. There were so many things going on in our family during my first year of mom life. Go back and listen to episodes 41 and 52 and a few of the bonus episodes I dropped around episode 70 to catch up on my backstory if you're not familiar with it. But between all of that, parenting a newborn, working a full-time job with an insane commute, getting social with other moms was near impossible. It wasn't until I connected with a few moms of other girls who'd become friends with my daughter at daycare that I started to really feel like I found my tribe. Those meetups, the play dates, and just knowing that someone else is going through the same thing, I can't even begin to tell you how that changed everything for me. Knowing we relate in so many areas and that they're just a quick call or text message away is hugely beneficial in so many ways. But my story isn't unique. The truth is so many moms out there are feeling the exact same way. Isolated, overwhelmed, and yearning for connection. In fact, according to the U.S. Surgeon General, America is facing a loneliness epidemic. Further, a recent study by Ohio State University's Wexner Medical Center revealed that over 50% of parents feel lonely at least some of the time, and a significant portion of them experience this loneliness on a weekly or even daily basis. That's a lot of moms out there feeling like they're on an island. So why is this happening? Well, we're living in a time where despite being more quote unquote, connected than ever through social media, real meaningful connections are getting harder to come by. The demands of motherhood can sometimes make it tough to maintain friendships. And for many, it's difficult to know where to start when looking for support. But here's the thing, having a tribe, a group of moms who get it is absolutely essential. It's not just about having someone to vent to or with, though that's important too. It's about creating a community where you can share experiences, exchange advice, and offer each other the encouragement we all need. Beyond just feeling less alone, finding your mom tribe can have a huge impact on your mental health. 
It's been shown that moms who have strong social connections are less likely to experience anxiety, depression, and stress. Just having someone to share a laugh with or even shed a tear with can make a world of difference. This kind of support can reduce the pressures of motherhood, making the whole experience not just manageable, but truly enjoyable. So if you've been feeling like something's missing, or if you've been struggling with the weight of it all, know that you're not alone and that finding your community can be a total game changer. All right, let's talk about the benefits of being social as a mom, because trust me, it goes far beyond just having someone to chat with over coffee or hang with during play dates. First and foremost, there's the emotional support. There's something incredibly comforting about being surrounded by people who just get it. They understand the ups and downs of motherhood because they're living it too. In a mom group, you find that much needed empathy. Someone to say, I know exactly how you feel when you're having a rough day. It's about validation, knowing that your feelings, whether it's exhaustion or pure joy, are shared and understood. And on those days when you feel like you're just barely holding it together, these moms are the ones who remind you that you're not alone and that you've got this. But it's not just about emotional support. Mom groups can be incredibly practical too. Need advice on how to deal with a picky eater? Someone in the group has probably been through it and has a tip that worked wonders for them. Maybe you're in desperate need of a few hours all to yourself. How about a babysitting swap with another mom? You take her kids one afternoon and she takes yours the next. It's a win-win. These groups are a treasure trove of practical help, and sometimes just knowing that someone is there to lend a hand can lighten your load. And then there's the sharing of resources. This is one of my favorite parts, from recommendations on the best local parks and activities to organizing play dates and mom nights out. Mom groups are often in the know about all the fun, family-friendly things happening in your area. Plus, there's the added bonus of hand-me-downs. Kids grow so fast, and it's great to have a group of moms to share or swap gently used clothes, toys, and gear with. It's like having your own little community marketplace. But perhaps one of the most beautiful things that comes from being social as a mom is the potential for lasting friendships. These connections don't just benefit us as moms, they're often the start of friendships that will grow right alongside our children. Your little one's best friend might be the child of your new mom friend, and as your kids grow, so too do these relationships evolving from play dates to school events and beyond. The friendships formed in these early years can truly last a lifetime. So whether it's for the emotional uplift, the practical help, or the potential for lifelong connections, being social as a mom is incredibly rewarding. We've talked about why finding your mom tribe is so important and all the incredible benefits of being part of a supportive community. So let's get into the practical side of things, how to actually find a mom group, or start one if you can't find the right fit. First off, local resources are a great place to start. Check out your community centers, libraries, or even local churches. Many of them host mom meetups or family-friendly events where you can connect with other moms. Don't forget about online platforms like Facebook groups or meetup.com. Just a quick search can reveal groups in your area focused on everything from playdates to fitness to crafting. These groups can be a fantastic way to dip your toes into a community without too much commitment up front. If you're looking for something even more comprehensive, I suggest taking a look into my MomCom database. It's completely free and is the first ever national database of mom groups across the U.S., making it super easy to find your tribe no matter where you are. You can search by location or even specific interests, whether you're a new mom, a working mom, or somewhere in between, there's a group out there waiting for you. So if you're looking around and haven't found the right fit locally 
or you're just getting started looking for the best group for you, this is a resource you'll definitely want to check out. Just go to community.secretmomhacks.com to get access. But what if you can't find a group that feels just right? Well, why not start your own? It might sound daunting, but it can actually be a lot of fun and incredibly rewarding. Just start small by hosting a casual coffee morning at your home or a local cafe. You could also organize a park play date where the kids can burn off some energy while you connect with other moms. If you're looking for something with a bit more structure, consider starting a book club or a themed meetup like a stroller walk or a mom and baby yoga session. The key is to keep it simple and focused on what you enjoy, and you'll attract like-minded moms in no time. Finally, a few tips for making your mom group a success. Regular meetups are crucial. They keep the momentum going and help build deeper connections. Open communication is also important. Create a group chat or an email list so everyone stays in the loop. And above all, be inclusive. Welcome moms from all walks of life with different parenting styles. The more diverse the group, the richer the experience. Remember, building a community takes time, but the rewards are absolutely worth it. By taking that first step, whether it's joining an existing group or starting your own, you're not just creating a support system for yourself, but for other moms too. So there you have it, friend. Real life proof that finding your tribe can make all the difference, whether you're just starting out on this journey or you're already part of a mom group. Remember that community is key. You don't have to navigate motherhood alone. The connections you make can provide the support, understanding, and joy that make all the ups and downs of this wild ride so much more manageable and even fun. If you're on the fence about reaching out or starting your own group, consider this your nudge. Take that first step. You might be surprised at just how many moms are out there waiting to connect with someone just like you. That's all I have for today's show. Check out today's show notes at secretmomhacks.com slash episode 83. Thank you for joining me on this episode of Secret Mom Hacks. I appreciate you spending time with me today and hope you found today's topic about mom communities helpful. If that's the case, please follow me on your favorite podcast platform. If you haven't already, give me a five-star rating and leave a review sharing your favorite takeaway so far. You can do all of that by going to ratethispodcast.com slash Secret Mom Hacks. Don't forget to stop by secretmomhacks.com where you can find transcripts, resources, and more. Hit up community.secretmomhacks.com where you can access the MomCom database for free and connect with a group in your area. Make sure you enter your email address over at secretmomhacks.com and subscribe for free so every episode is delivered straight to your inbox. Stay tuned for next week's episode, and until then, you've got this, mama. 